I know there's a lot of different ego in tennis. As you know, tennis is classified 3-0, 3-5, 4-5, 4-0. There's a lot of egos. So my question to you is, um, you come in, you come up with the idea of starting a tennis. This is a tennis heaven, heaven Sarasota and Bradenton. We have a lot of academies, a lot of clubs, a lot of how you keep people together. Where you got this people skill? Even your well, phone message when you call, you know, it's very receiving, it's very attractive. You feel like you want to leave a message on Steve uh, voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think it it I think it starts with. Um, you know, the vision of what you're trying to achieve, um, which is, I think people, it's a heavily fragmented tennis landscape, right? You have people living all over, you know, the Sarasota, Manatee County uh, area. And, and really this is true of, of all of Florida and probably all of the country. Um, there's many tennis players throughout the country and people are playing at various places or a number of places. And I think people, uh, what I've noticed is that people, you know, tend to focus on the, the current place they're playing and are very, um, nervous about when that landscape changes like what happens if the tennis courts aren't here or what happens if the club is sold or what hap happens you know um if i can't play tennis tomorrow and i think people are focusing on the wrong aspect certainly access to courts is important but the more important thing uh, i feel is focusing on the tennis community and ourselves we need to stay together as a tennis community first, and then we'll find a place to play. Um, because we can always build a tennis facility. We can always find a place to put lines down and play tennis. But it's very, very difficult once the tennis community gets fragmented to, to build that together. So um, really the ability to work with egos is really just the ability to – know what people want and to, you know, I have a very good um, ability to be humble and not have an ego when it comes to this kind of stuff. And, you know, I've been in positions of leadership before and, you know, I'm not one that needs to worry about titles or, power or any of those things for me it's really comes down to i think it's you know what's important and what needs to be done to keep the community right. together and that's really where i derive my satisfaction from if you will is when i see all the moving pieces you know working together i mean if if other people want to step in and take leadership roles or they want to do work or they want to help you know, the more the merrier. Um, right. uh, but it, if that's how I'm able to keep this together is by staying focused on the goal. Right. Interesting. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now I understand you. You're new to tennis, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. Um, what is the tennis for you? What tennis? You were a competitive back racer. You were competitive sellers. If you have to compare tennis to selling, uh, bike race, I've been to some of them and watched them. It's not, it's, it's not easy. What have tennis done for you the last five years? Just share that with us, please. Yeah, I think it's given me, you know, that, um, you know, additional friendship and additional camaraderie that I kind of missed. I used to play a lot of team sports when I was younger. And, um, you know, just being in a community of like-minded people, similar to, um, similar to cycling, um, you know, I used, there, was a, there was definitely a cycling community. And that community aspect of just um, being around like-minded people and sharing ideas and thoughts and having fun, I think 
you know, I just enjoy that. And um, tennis brings that. Um, whether you're playing singles or doubles or just getting together for events, um, you know, the, the, the tennis is an avenue to accessing that community, and which is really very special. So, um, you know, if it was tennis without the community aspect of it, I think it would still be okay, but I don't think I would be as um, excited about it or motivated about it. It would just be, oh, yeah, you know, we can go play tennis. Certainly the game is very um, interesting to me because I'm still learning and, and the ability to continually move up levels and get better at tennis um, um, is intriguing to me personally. But I think the best part about it is the people that I get to hang out with while I'm doing that. Right. If you're joining us, uh, this is Seku Radio, and today our guest is Stephen Paley. is a president of uh, CTA, Sarasota Bradenton Tennis uh, Community Association. And uh, Stephen, what are the characteristics of a leader? I mean, uh, can you define on your own <laughs> From your own point of view, because, I mean, a lot of these guys go and buy $300 of racket balls and equipment and come and they want to destroy somebody. So uh, how you keep all these guys and girls and boys together? So just define leadership from your own point of view. Um, just to school Yeah, I think it's – I think leaders have an ability to um, define a vision – and a path um, and, and rally people around that vision and then, you know, help them work together to achieve that vision. You know, a lot of times things seem impossible and, right. or in dire situations, oh, you know, this can't be done or that can be done. But I think leaders tend to be able to see the opportunity and to build, you know, that vision. Um, currently we're in a relationship with the ownership of the Sarasota sports club. And that club had, um, well, it had been operating, you know, um, on, on a small level over the last few years. Um, we, we're able to work with the owner and, you know, define a vision, let's say for the tennis community of how we could help manage that club and bring it maybe up to a higher level and open up more courts and more access. So fitting in with our goal of providing affordable access to tennis in an inclusive setting where we could have as many possible members of the Sarasota sports club as possible, you know, it, it really required looking past, you know, what's currently happening there and defining a vision of, you know, if we can provide this, 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 and this, and, and do this, 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 and this, this is what that picture looks like. And the ability to paint that picture for the tennis community so that people can say, oh, yes, now I, I see what you're talking about. And then right. people can get behind that. And then, you know, of course, executing on that vision. So that's really the leader's role I see in, in most of the work that I do with um, the current company I'm involved in, um, my security integration company, as well as businesses in the past. It's really, you know, coming in there and defining that vision and getting people to understand what the plan is from getting from point A to point B. And I, I think that many people tend to look at all the pitfalls and look at all of the, the, the problem areas of, Oh, why something can't be done. And I prefer, and I think most, most leaders prefer to say, if we could get to this point, wouldn't that be great? Okay. Well, if we can agree that that would be great, then let's try to figure out, well, here we are today, and what do we have to do step by step 
certainly it's it's hard work, but what do we have to do to get to that point that um, that point B that would 